Am I considered a Visco girl for saying save the turtles? I don't know, because I don't know what a Visco girl is, and at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. Hello, welcome back to my channel. As most of you would know, especially with the title of this video, I am a cosplayer. I've had a lot of people in the past ask me how to get into cosplay, and to that I've never really had very good answers. So I figured I'd start a series of videos explaining some of the basics that I wish I had known when I was a baby cosplayer. Because I've been cosplaying for like three, maybe four years now, and I've learned some things, but I'm also not an expert. So it's a learning experience for us both. So today I'm going to be focusing on the big misconception that cosplay has to be super expensive to be good. It really don't. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into the tips. <laughs> so one of my biggest things is planning and brainstorming what you're going to do. Whatever works for you, but you need to be organized. You can't just buy things that you think will work and then realize that they're not actually part of the costume you're trying to make and or just anything of that extent. Planning will help you save a lot of money in the long run. Even though you will probably lose money to experimenting, especially when you start making stuff yourself, planning what you need is going to really help you. For example, if you're trying to sew something and you think you need a second kind of fabric and you don't end up needing it for the pattern you need, just make sure to read all your instructions, use some lists, do your research, make sure you're organized and ready before you start any project. I use lists personally and I use the app called Cost Planner. Some people draw designs of their costumes and go off and list what needs to be where on a diagram. Whatever will work for you if you are a visual learner, if you need to say it out loud to someone, if you're an auditory learner, go with that because you're just gonna like it in the long run that you thought about it before you went into something and wasted money on something you didn't need or you bought the wrong thing because I've done that before a lot thrift stores goodwill cheap internet apps of the like will be your best friend <laughs> I got my entire B from B and puppy cat cosplay for five dollars the shirt was $3 and the pink shorts were $2. So using apps like Depop or Wish, I think, I don't have a lot of experience with Wish, but using apps like that and or going to thrift stores in general are gonna be helpful to you, especially when you're trying to find more simple pieces. I've had a lot of pieces come from Goodwill, especially if you're doing simple characters who wear more like clothing-y clothing rather than like old-fashioned-y clothing. Yeah. And you can modify things you buy from Goodwill because they're not super expensive. For example, my Aura Black Quill from uh, Ace Attorney, I bought a 3XL white button-up shirt to make her dress out of. It's little things like that that you might want to think about when walking into a Goodwill. Have a list so you don't just buy a bunch of random stuff. I've done that too. Goodwills, they kind of have a lot of weird stuff that'll be useful to you. Especially if you're cosplaying like Adventure Zone characters or podcast characters who don't have definitive outfits and you just need a lot of weird stuff, you know, the taco taco. Acquire new skills and research some of them. So, especially when you're making cosplays, there's a lot of skills that people really hoist on you, like you need to learn how to use thermoplastic or EVA foam or stuff like that. And if you're making armor and stuff, yeah, that's super helpful. But for me personally, I know I don't do a lot of characters with armor like that, like I'd love to in the future, but I just haven't had a need to learn it yet. But when I do, I'm going to research it. But littler skills that I picked up along the way that I wish somebody would have told me would be super useful. Knitting. Knitting's really useful, especially if you have a lot of characters with scarves. Rose the Law. <laughs> For example, I am currently knitting my own Snufkin scarf. Here's what he looks like versus how long the scarf has gotten so far. I have updates on my Instagram if you so wish to know how long the scarf gets, but so far it goes around my neck at least. Um, it takes more time, obviously, um, but this wool was $5. I'm not halfway through the skein of it. This is the full skein. I still obviously have a lot left. 
So I'm definitely going to be able to make this pretty large and it'll be a much bigger scarf than a yellow scarf I would have bought for $5. Um, another one is embroidery, especially if you're doing cartoon characters, like western cartoon characters, who have little insignias on them, like Bee from Bee and Puppy Cat has her bee on her shirt, uh, Mabel Pines has stuff on her sweaters. If you know how to embroider, it'll be pretty good if you have to make those cartoon insignias. Another uh, fan base that has those is Homestuck. But I have currently just started getting into embroidery. I am currently embroidering Jiro. So it's a little messy because it's my first one, but it's not that bad. But yeah, embroidery is kind of a cool thing. I would pick it up. I wish I would have done it earlier, but I didn't really know what it was. But if you're doing Danganronpa characters and you buy a cheaper school uniform off of like Amazon, for example, and you want it to have the weird insignias that Danganronpa characters have on their stuff, that'll be useful if you really want to be that candid about it, but I'll go into that later. Get wigs, makeup, and stuff like that that works for multiple characters. You will be happy you did. I invested in a pretty expensive long blonde wig and I have used it for pretty much every long blonde haired character that doesn't have bangs and even some that do, like just constantly. And it's such a nice wig that you don't really notice, but you can do the same thing with cheaper wigs too, because I've done that too. My long blonde wig, I bought for Taco and Loop from the Adventure Zone, but I have used it for Sonia, Kaede, Present Mike with his hair down, Heather McNamara, Mary Christensen, Luna Lovegood, way more too. It's, you want to, if you are gonna invest, make sure it's something that you can use for multiple characters. And even if you're not investing, just, buy stuff that you can think of at least like two characters you can do with it rather than just one. And I'm well aware that there are some characters who have specialized hair and stuff like that won't necessarily be able to, but even if you get p pretty creative with it after you buy it, you'll be happy that you did. Some characters have completely like personalized hair that I can't think of more than two characters who have that hair are like Glimmer from the new She-Ra, and Kana from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. I can't necessarily think of characters who would have that hair, but like for Glimmer, if you just wear two wigs on top of each other, I know that sounds weird, but like to get that layering she has, you can use the pink wig on top for Mina and the purple wig underneath for another character with short purple hair that I can't think of right now. Um, sometimes creativity will just be really helpful though. I bought my Suyu wig thinking that it was only gonna be used for Suyu and never anyone else, but I'm using it for Tenko from Danganronpa, hopefully soon, I just haven't had time to yet. This goes for like contacts too, if you want to get into colored contacts, though I don't necessarily think those are mandatory, especially if you're just starting out, but I know personally I really like colored contacts and I got into them pretty early in my cosplay journey, so I figured I'd mention it. Makeup's pretty helpful. I will eventually do a full video on makeup, but Target, Walmart, drugstores are just godly. Like, they will have stuff for you no matter what, and it's usually under $10. It might take a while to build up like a collection because I know I have a pretty big collection going that you see in my makeup videos but start with some of the basics like some foundation, some eyeliner, mascara, maybe some clear lip gloss, maybe a brow pencil and you can kind of start from there and just branch out. Your own wardrobe can be your best friend. I know for a fact that closet cosplays aren't as bad as people make them out to be because you're just testing the character and seeing if you want to make the full expensive version. So use stuff from your closet. If you think it can work for a character or if you think the character would wear something like that, do it. I'm basically in a closet rose cosplay right now. I hate that. Um, closet cosplays are very good practice too in general for if you're practicing makeup or wearing a wig. All very useful tips to have. Lots of my cosplays are just tests made from pieces of other cosplays too. Never be afraid to do that. My pregame K Day, for example, um, is made with my Toko Fukawa shirt, which is the only navy blue sailor uniform I have, and then my toga skirt, my long blonde wig I was talking about earlier, and some bobby pins. And that's all I used. And it was stuff I already had when I was just like, hmm, I guess I'll do K-Day, you know, like, V3 is popular. You don't need 
to buy a whole new outfit for each person, especially if you have parts of it already. Say that you want to do the My Hero Academia uniform, for example, and you already have a sailor skirt and a white button up and a red tie and all you need is the gray blazer. Well, as a test, you find in like, I don't know, a relative's closet, a gray blazer. Just test it with that and then if you like it, you can either buy the full uniform if you really feel so inclined to have those perfect color matching, you know, or you can just go to your Goodwill, buy a gray blazer, and then modify it and make it the UA blazer. Like for example, this works for pretty much all characters, you know, you know. Nothing is mandatory, no matter what anyone tells you. I can make a list of stuff that I think is mandatory for cosplay, and really none of it would be because I know multiple people who don't use the same materials as I do, and or use cheaper or more expensive versions of Any tool can be worked around if you're smart enough. You don't need a separate wig brush, like I have a separate wig brush, but you don't need one if you want to just use a hairbrush from like the dollar store. I bought a specific wig brush because I just found one on sale, so like, you don't need a certain tool. You can find workarounds if you're creative enough. Start off small and you will grow. This is an all over tip no matter what we're talking about, but in this context, mech suits are obviously way more expensive than like Dipper Pines cosplay. If you want to be cheap, I don't suggest trying to make a giant robot suit, but I know there's probably cheap ways to do that. Obviously it's not my area of expertise, but you know, like cardboard boxes or something. I'm sure somebody has done it. I suggest starting small. Maybe make a list of characters who only have like five different pieces that you need to buy of like a shirt and shorts or something that are a different color than ones you have. Or closet cosplay them with your hair. Buy like one wig and just try and make a bunch of different characters out of your closet. Just start little and you will grow. I started cosplaying with stuff I had bought at a back to school sale at Kohl's, some gray face paint that I had gotten for my birthday, and a black wig that I had also gotten for my birthday, and that is how I became a Homestuck for the first like eight times that I cosplayed Homestuck, which I was very young. I then slowly bought more stuff, and a lot of it does come off of these tips, even though I have grown as a cosplayer since that first time I tried gray makeup in my bathroom four years ago. A cosplay journey is really up to you. Your cosplay can be made up of entirely one dollar items or nothing, just stuff you got for free out of your closet that you bought a long time ago, or it can be like hundred dollar pieces all around. It really doesn't matter where you start, but starting small is where I think most of us need to start. If you have the means to start bigger, I guess go for it, but I assume since you clicked on a video that is called probably something like how to start cosplay on a budget, you don't, which is fine. Not having a big budget for a hobby is always fine, no matter what the hobby is, including cosplay. I'm obviously wearing a wig right now, but it was probably a cheap one off of Amazon. You don't have to buy an Arda wig for every cosplay you do or an epic cosplay wig for every cosplay you do. I think my main point with this video is, no matter where you start, the only thing that matters is you experiment and have fun and do what makes you happy while cosplaying. That's really the only thing that matters when you're cosplaying. Whatever is making you happy and comfortable is all that should matter to anyone else. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful, and I hope your day gets better from here. I've been Kai. Bye!